but I also want to show you the instead of trigger. As the name implies, the instead of trigger occurs instead of whatever transaction fired that trigger. So what we're really saying is, for this trigger, when we see an insert to the person table, instead of doing that insert, we're going to do whatever code is in the instead of trigger. Different than the after trigger, you can only have one instead of trigger per table. And because it happens instead of, you can actually place instead of triggers on views. So if you have an instead of trigger on a view that's not an updatable view, the instead of trigger will fire instead of the transaction that is attempting to update the view. And the instead of trigger could do some other code instead. So let's create the instead of trigger called trigger2 and see how it works. So with the instead of trigger in place, we're going to attempt to insert Johnny McDougal into the person table. In the messages, it says in the instead of trigger, which is the code in the instead of trigger, and it looks like it says one row affected. However, let's go and see if Johnny actually made it to the table. And no such Johnny is at the table, which proves that the instead of trigger fired instead of that insert. And then I'm going to drop trigger too, just so that it doesn't get in the way of anything else we want to do later in this lesson. And to show you there's no tricks up my sleeve, we can go ahead and insert Johnny without the instead of trigger. And look, there he is. It's important to realize triggers happen inside of the transaction. So once we say fire with that transaction, for example here with this insert, a lot of things happen inside of that transaction. Specifically, there's 10 steps. In the lesson on data modification, we talked a little bit about identity insert. So if it's an identity column, that'll be checked. And then if the row does not accept nulls, that check takes place. The third check is the data type check, which makes sure you're not inserting characters into an integer data type column, for example. So after these first three checks take place, then the instead of trigger fires, if there is one. And if there is an instead of trigger fires, that's it. That's the end of this transaction. The instead of trigger is going to go off and do something different. If there's no instead of trigger, then the transaction will check the primary key constraint to make sure you're not putting in a duplicate primary key. Any check constraints, which are custom constraints, will go ahead and be checked. Then the foreign key constraint is checked making sure that if you're inserting into a foreign key that there's a valid primary key that it can reference. If all of this takes place and everything is still looking good and no errors have occurred, then the data modification actually takes place and it's written to the transaction log. After it's in the transaction log and we know it's safe, then the after trigger takes place. And the after trigger can do whatever else it wants to do. It can examine what was taking place write it to an audit log, do some more data validation. And if the after trigger code detects that there's some kind of problem with this transaction, it can choose to roll it back using a rollback command. When the after trigger completes, then the transaction is fully committed. If you're wondering what happened to the step of writing to the data file, well, that actually takes place by the lazy writer or by one of the other threads inside of SQL Server which periodically scans all of the data pages in memory, and if the data page is dirty, writes it to the data file to keep the data file in sync with what's happening in memory. So that might take place sometime before or sometime after the commit. It really doesn't matter. The key thing is the update to the transaction log, and then the commit transaction being written to the transaction log, because SQL Server can always roll something back or complete it based upon the transaction log in case of a server crash which, as a side note for hardware design, really places the emphasis, the bottleneck, on the transaction log for updates, not on the data file.